Yo, what's happening guys? Welcome to your ninth CSS Flexbox tutorial and in this video we're going to talk about flow and axes. <laughs> okay then dogs, so I'm back in the base index file right here in the root of the folder and as you can see we've got our flex container once again with these three flex elements inside it, one, two and three. And in the style.css we're saying that each of these flex elements has a height of 100 pixels and a flex property of zero grow, zero shrink and 100 pixels for the flex basis. So that's the initial width if you like. Okay, so so far in this playlist we've just kind of witnessed the default behavior of flex items and that is to stack horizontally beside each other in what is essentially a row going across, right? But we can kind of override that default behavior by explicitly saying, look, we want these actually to stack in a column. And the way we do that is by using the flex flow property, right? So what we do is we'd apply the flex flow property to the flex container, and that controls the flow of all the elements within it, or rather all the flex elements within it. And we can say we want them to flow in a row like this or in a column. So this is the default behavior flow in a row going across. So let's go ahead and override it. We can say flex flow and you can see there's row, that's the default behavior. If I put in column now, then now they're going one on top of the other in a column. And the reason they're full width is because these guys are all block level elements and they're taking up 100% width of their parent element by default. And this flex basis no longer controls the initial width of the elements because they're not going in a row across anymore. This flex basis now controls the initial height of these elements because they're now going in a column downwards. So if we change this, for example, to 200, you'll see that change. I'm just going to pop that back to 100 for now. Now then, so to kind of better explain this, I want to show you a quick diagram that I've done. So essentially, when we use Flexbox, there are two axes. There is a main axis and a cross axis. And what we do when we change the value of flex flow is we're just changing the direction of the axis. So when flex flow is equal to row, then the main axis is going across in essentially a row, right? And the elements always follow the main axis. They line up in the direction of the main axis. So in this case, they go across in a row. And the cross axis is perpendicular always to the main axis. So in this case, it's going down. Now, when we change the flex flow property to equal column, what happens is the axis kind of switch around and the cross axis now goes across and the main axis goes down. And remember, the elements always follow the flow of the axis, the main axis rather. So they're flowing downwards in a column. That's how it works. So there are certain properties when we use Flexbox that only apply to the main axis. And there are certain properties that only apply to the cross axis. And obviously, depending on what we have flex row set to, um, then the effect of these properties is going to seem a little different. And I'm going to demonstrate that now. First of all, let's just change this back to row like that. And then let's set this to be, let's say, 200 pixels. And then what I'm going to do is use the justify content property. Now this property is only ever applied to the main axis and now because we're using flex flow equals row then this justify content is going to apply horizontally in a row and we've seen if we do something like this center then it's going to justify this content all these flex items in the center. Likewise we could say something like flex end and then they're going to go to the end but the minute we change this now to column, then that's not going to work. They're not going to center this way because now they're taking up all that width and the axis has changed. The axis, the main axis rather, is now going down. And justified content, remember, works on the main axis. So in order to see this in kind of action, what we need to do is go down here and give this a bigger height. We'll say height is 800 pixels. And then what we'll do is change this to 100 pixels. And now you can see that they're justifying down the main axis flex end so they're all going to the end. If we put center here, then they're all going to go to the center like that. And if we put flex start, 
they're all going to go to the start. So that's how this works. Justify content always works along the main axis. And when we change the flex flow property from column to row or row to column, we're changing the main axis from across to down or from down to across. And the justified content is always working on that main axis. Yeah, it might seem a little bit confusing at first. Um, I was. But then as soon as you start to play with it a little bit more, it does get easier and the penny starts to drop. So I want to show you one more thing now, and that is to do with this flex flow. We've seen row and column, but we can also do something like column reverse or row reverse. So let's check out row reverse first of all. So look at the order right here. Yeah, if we do row reverse, then it's essentially just going to reverse the order of those and then put them over to the right. Okay, check that out again. If we just change this to row, so the greens first here, now the reds first on the left. Okay, so it kind of switches it. Now let's change this to column, and then we'll do column reverse, and it switches it again, changes the order, and it goes to flex end. Okay, so it can get a little bit complicated when you're mixing all these different properties up, but again, like I say, it's just practice. So what we're gonna do in the next tutorial is take a look at some of the properties that we can apply to the cross axis. Remember, justified content is applied to the main axis. We're gonna look at some properties which we can apply to the cross axis next. So if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment down below. Otherwise, don't forget to share, subscribe and like, and I'll see you in the next tutorial.